cool. Now we're rolling lights on how they're supposed to be. Yes. This is a beautiful time to be alive. Absolutely. Episode 63 of From Everyone. I've been dreading saying that because I've been ready to say it wrong all day, all week because I get ready for this. But yes, episode 63 of Th- From 63. Everyone. 63. Uh, shirts are available everywhere. Right now, That's right. I have shirts for sale designed by my special guest today, Mr. Zadak Brooks. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> he rules hard yeah. as hell. He is caffeinated to the gills right now Dude. and all pouring out. Sorry. Um, <laughs> hell yes. Everywhere. Uh, I say this before diving into this. Yes, shirts are available right now. They're yes. on my website for sale. Fuck uh, it up. Go there. They are $22. I'm That's selling right. them as close to cost as I can possibly do without yeah losing yeah. money on the deal. Wonderful. <laughs> so yes, 22 bucks. Go buy a shirt, please. Pre-orders Fuck will be yeah. up until I think May 11th. Do it. Is the I decided on. Okay. Um, they look cool as hell. Shirts were decided. Uh, the other piece of that is a little rebrand here. So go look at all the new pictures, new merches, oh, yeah. new oh, yeah. stuff. Everything should look cool. I think it all looks the same probably uh, if you're watching on YouTube, but mm-hmm. all the other thumbnails and cool stuff would have happened. And that is because of Zadak. My man. Um, <gasps> the crowd goes wild. <laughs> crowd is going wild. My one other last bit of housekeeping before we dive into stuff uh, is that I've been behind on episodes, so I've been kind of like bi-weekly-ish, and I've been determined to be weekly, okay. uh, but this month has been so busy that I've fallen behind, so it'll be back mm. to weekly, hopefully in May. It should be back to weekly very, very soon. Weekly episodes. But not quite yet, but okay. for the moment, Zaydak is here. Yeah. My man, how are we living? What's up? What's up, dude? Thank you. Thank yeah. you for helping me bring all this stuff together. It was a real interesting challenge to be a client for the first time. Yeah. Like I've, I've been working with clients for so <laughs> long, and I feel like I've consumed so much of that. And then when I was pitching stuff to you, it was a really scary thing of like, oh, I didn't realize how hard it was to send someone my idea. And that like right. vulnerability yeah. of being like, here is what I am dreaming of. Can you make this happen? Yeah. It's a, a vulnerable place that I've just never been in. I've always been on the receiving end of that. And I appreciated it. And it was a really interesting like look into the alternate side of the universe yeah. to hand someone my idea. It's a weird concept for sure. Um, I feel like in everything I've been involved in, in like the past like decade, I guess, I never really have been the person to be like, I need this done because I kind of just did everything. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to think of if there was a moment, huh? I guess like recording music. Yeah, because I I can't do that really. (laughs) I have to outsource. I did it like once, but yeah. I am awful at asking for help, like notoriously awful asking for help (laughs) in my first uh, yeah, big breakthrough that is everyone's big breakthrough that is therapy and being like, oh, maybe oh, I yeah. do need to talk to someone. Yep. And so I feel like that was a good like exercise of like, oh, asking for help. Turns out there's some value in here. Yeah. And yeah, of course, as I'm on the show every week, I don't think I've talked to anyone who's been like, yeah, I did this all myself. Everyone is like an independent person who has a thing and they've done a lot themselves. Right. But everyone at some point said, I have a shortcoming here and someone else sure, can fix yeah. this thing. And I'm trying to get better at recognizing those in myself and being like, Okay, it is it is not a weakness thing to ask for help. And I think yeah. that's also like a my heart of my ego is like I think by not asking for help, I get stronger and I learn more and there's like mm-hmm. some value in that. And so I'm trying to piece like when is asking for help like a time saver and when is it like a, right. like a cheat code that I should be like enduring, <laughs> I guess. And I'm always playing that game. And probably it's more often that I should be asking than not. But whatever. Yeah, um, it happens. That is what it is. Uh, yeah. I feel like for you as a business person, it must be like you have a lot more experience being on both sides of this thing that yeah. like, I feel like it, it, for me, it felt like a really big, uh, advantage for my business. I move forward and like can empathize with like clients more and be more aware of what that process is like from the other side. Yeah. In the same course. sense that like the, the two perspectives there kind of play off each other. I think so. I think going into, uh, like being a client, I guess is always tough. Cause like you don't want to micromanage mm-hmm. and like, yes, it's, <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> which we've talked about. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it's a perfect example because, like, you don't want to micromanage, but yeah. at the end of the day, like, this is your idea, this is your baby. That, like, my job is to just like make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know. Yes. So, like, a lot of people lose sight of that. Um, but so I think they really play off each other in terms of like, like, if you're a client, micromanage, <laughs> yeah. not in like a mean way or like you know, but also don't be like creative freedom Mm -hmm. go crazy and then you get the creative freedom and then they're like oh well i'm not really feeling that yes i also i don't like when a client says oh you have free reign because that almost sounds like a cop-out to me it's like oh you didn't want to do the work you don't really have the idea here so you're just giving it to me as if it's a gift and it's like Mm -hmm. no no no. this is a this is like a hack like half-ass job that you're it's like submitting homework that's half done to me it's (laughs) like like do the work do it show me it's a collaboration you know and I think I want to know that you care about it. Like, even if of your course. idea is dog shit, like, I'm happy to take a dog shit <laughs> idea and make it good. But, like, yeah. I need to know that you have put enough time in to arrive at an idea. And, right. like, 
I don't really care what that idea is. It may not be the idea for the video, but like I need to know that you have some stake in this game, some equity yeah, of course. in this process here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You mentioned the micromanaging part, and certainly that was a terrifying <laughs> fear of mine. What I think I learned, uh, and you did a great job of bearing with me, but what I think I learned was to ask for like specific things. So instead of being like, hey, make me, uh, my first thing was like, hey, make me a Rise Core logo. Like make me a logo yeah, in 2010. Yeah. And pretty quickly I was like, oh, that doesn't mean anything. Like there, that is such an enormous <laughs> term that it like, yeah. it kind of does, but there's a million bands we could be talking about. And mm -hmm. a million, yeah, it means something to me, but you don't know what bands I've consumed that yeah, right. justify this genre. So then it was like, okay, let me actualize these things. Let me find five or 10 references or Which whatever. Which was sick, and like, yeah. Send stuff. And yeah, yeah it, it solidified me as like, okay, when I'm working with a band now in the future, it's like, yeah, give me references. I don't right. I don't want to know what like it should be bright. It's like bright doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. Cinematic doesn't mean anything. Like give yeah, me yeah, uh, yeah. an actual thing to compare it to. Yeah, and I think that's on the the uh designer or videographer's side too. Mm -hmm. It's like I just started trying to figure out how to streamline my process a little more. Yeah. Lately, and like something that I found that was really cool is like just make a fucking questionnaire, you know, and like send out to them and be like answer all of these mm -hmm. to like the, the the best of your ability and then we'll set up a call and talk about it yep because when you do shit like that then you could be like okay give me you you fuck a rise core is it a skylight drive or is it asking alexandria you know mm -hmm. and then we'll lay all that out yep you know which was sick because when you were like rise core i was like that's dope i also like rise core <laughs> what was me is fucking sick <laughs> and then you were just like here's a fucking file of like 18 logos and i was like that's <laughs> sick it helps me so much. Yes. It's so I, dope. I think for me, it was like a fear of like, yeah, micromanaging is the thing. I don't want to tell you what mm. to do. I think I understand that the, as an artist, I understand the best thing is to let me do the art and let you of be course. the ideas guy. And so yeah. like, it was a fine line there of like, yeah, I didn't want to overstep, but yeah, it was a good exercise of, yeah, uh, experience that process and just experiencing the vulnerability that's of associated course. with it, where I, I don't think I'd ever quite given that credit of how scary it is to come to me with a question <laughs> or with yeah. an idea. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned that you go through like the questionnaire thing. And I think I've leaned into like, I almost don't want to talk to you before a phone call. To me, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I almost like in the process of texting, I feel like so much gets lost that to me, it's like, of course, yeah. tell, say hi. And I'm going to say, Oh, when are you free for a call? Yeah. Like hop in discord. Yes. Let's hang out. Yes. It's so much easier. So much more fluid to get yeah, things man. done that way. Um, I'm realizing that I also forgot to shout out that other people can now hire you for stuff as well. So Z, yes. Zadok Brook Design Company is officially legitimized everywhere. Where's the best place for people to hit you up? Where can they contact you for oh, work shit. as incredible as I've gotten? Oh, uh, well, you're so sweet. I'm going to cry. Inquiries at ZadakBrooks.com for the email. Sick. Uh, Zadak Brooks x i think is my instagram i'm now. sure it's all fine to uh, yeah. Uh, yeah i don't know i think if you type in zadak it pops up fine. so like if you're doing socials do that don't dm me on twitter that's weird <laughs> uh yeah you could dm me on instagram but i'm gonna eventually ask you to email me just because it's easier for me yes uh, yes are you good at drawing that line uh sorry finish your plugs and then I'll oh, move oh, on with mine. no uh zadakbrooks.com fire soon i what i want to try to do is have it up when this drops sick so then we can like announce it all at the same time fire big fucking what's up bitch everything's live That's go hit right. up zadak uh for band logos business logos uh what other merch designs t-shirt designs what anything other, yeah. what other things are people designing these days what are uh, common shit. things people ask you for uh brands uh branding your company i could do that or your business or whatever you want to call it check did that for me yeah uh shirts check. merchandise <laughs> Little knickknacks, cool things. Check. Tech decks. Tech decks. <laughs> Shout Maybe. out. Maybe. I emoji. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, I'm determined, dude. Dude, that, fucking that's what do I'm, it. I've been talking about tech decks for a while. Uh, uh, the torch is down here. And the other thing that I need to figure out. I don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know what they look like. I don't know where they go. But I'm so determined to put torches on these motherfucking walls. I'm, dude, torches. Fucking big sign. Yeah. I'm I see it now. I feel it in my I bones. feel it. It's yes. gonna be here and there's gonna be a fucking fingerboard <laughs> with a cool little rail or a ramp. That's the goal. And then yep. I, I have to do like sixteen more episodes yep. because I just want a tech deck on this table. Yes, yes. Last time you were here uh, was episode fourteen. I was checking earlier. Was it fourteen? Uh, it was episode fourteen, so it's just about a year ago. It dropped, I think it was like April fourth. So what the fuck? The the funny part to me is I realized that was the last time I got a haircut was right before the episode. <laughs> <laughs> because when I watched to my hair is like to my shoulders and everything since then has just been slowly coming down dude i'm the opposite look so, 
Damn, my boy got a haircut today. You got one like five minutes in the future. It's so I, wrong. I, <laughs> I did it last night. Hell yeah. Yeah. Dude. I'm bald now. I need some of that. I am so overdue for a haircut. Oh, fuck. It's very rare that I say that I need a haircut, but dude, I finally am there. You know, I... Oh, I'm so good. The ADHD is bumping. <laughs> yep. The caffeine's moving. I'm so we're fired. good. At, let's go. This we're going everywhere. Energy. Fuck it up. Take me somewhere. Buddy. Okay, we're going. I used to color my hair all the time. Yes. All the fucking time. Yep. But I also always wear hats. So <laughs> I would always like buzz my head, dye it, or I would, I would bleach it. Then I would color it. I had okay. green. I had blue. I had purple. Fucking, I tried to dye it black once, but it had a blue tone in it. So then when I went out in the sun, it looked blue <laughs> and it pissed me off. So I shaved it. <laughs> Is your then, hair already kind of black? It's like a really dark brown. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but <laughs> fucking, yeah. oh my God, my brain. Wrapping it all around, I, uh, I'm i balding at 25. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're like me and you're balding at 25, that's the camera, that's the TV, that's the camera. If you're balding, just fucking do it. <laughs> Is Get that because of, of like gas station hair dye? <laughs> like, do you think it's self-inflicted <laughs> or do you think it's like familiar? I think it's, I think it's self-inflicted <laughs> for sure. Because, so... Uh, my dad is bald, but I think he did it himself. Sure. Uh, and then everyone else in my family has like long fucking hair and like, so I think I just did it myself. <laughs> like I wear hats all the time. I'm always wearing a hat. Yeah. A beanie or a hat. I'm always fucking, yeah, I think I did it myself. I was full hat game for a while. And in the last year or two, I've been cleaning up a little bit trying to like. Well, now you got to wear the backwards hat. <laughs> I do. We got to get you an orange one. Fair, yeah. I gotta yeah. get the hat game going again. Gotta, yeah, I gotta, guess beanies are still happening. Gotta but fit the brand. Yeah, gotta do. Yeah, I got tired of having like a hat tan line. I'm looking for. I, I have real. it. I have it right now. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm bald, so it looks fucking worse. Hell yes, dude. That's okay. That's why we make our job behind the camera, behind the screens. Let other people uh -huh. have the starlight, and we get to do the behind the scenes. Yeah, fun shit here. don't look at my head. <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> um, you mentioned that you uh, have people go from Instagram DMs to email, that you always like push them that way. Yes. Uh, do you feel like you're good at setting boundaries in your business like that? Where I think I'm so uh. bad at like, like when I'm so willing to like, or so desperate to do whatever is comfortable for people that sometimes yeah. I omit what's comfortable for me. I'm trying to get better <laughs> at like being like, no, this is how I work best. Right, you'll, right. you'll get a better experience if you do it this way. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm not good at it yet. Is that something you're comfortable <laughs> with? Are you good at that? Is this uh, still something you're working on? It was weird for me at first too, because like, I think it's more so my transition from being like freelance guy to like business owner. Yeah. And like founder of a company. It's yes. like, all right, now, yeah, you could DM me. Like if we're homies, just DM me and we'll do something. But like I try to bring it over to email because it like it allows me like I talk to people on Instagram. Like, all my buddies are on Instagram, so if, mm -hmm. like, I'm DMing now, your fucking message is all the way down here. Yeah. But if we're only... And also, I made a cool email. <laughs> Inquiry, inquiries at ZadakBrooks.com. That is dope. I got to spend money on the so at I have to fucking, yeah. yeah. Fair. Yeah. It's a, please use it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to like, do that. that yeah. When that shit's empty, I'm pissed. <laughs> yep. I'm like, yo. And then I get DMs, and people are like, yo, like, dope. And I'm like, ah. Go there. I was, uh, so this month has been, I'm tangenting to come back. Uh, this month has been really busy with college shows for me. I've been, yeah, Dope. colleges all over the Northeast and it's cool. been, yeah, three or four shows a week all over the place. Damn. Most notably, we did two chains at Fairfield recently. <laughs> Shut was, the fuck up. It was not well attended, which is arguably the funniest thing to ever see two chains in an empty arena. Holy was like shit. Top tier humor. Uh, okay, wait. I feel like <laughs> that's their fault. The college's I, fault. I or think the, it's the generationally mi missed because the kids really? who are in college now, I don't think, like, I think 2 Chains is to us. Yeah, they don't fuck with 2 Chains I like that? I don't think so. I think he's dated. I think it's like... 2 Chains? Come on. <laughs> it was sick. It ruled. Fuck. Uh, it was, I would have been stoked. I was stoked. Yeah, I was happy. And yeah, like I said, seeing Dang. him in an empty arena is, uh, to me, the perfect 2 Chains show. <laughs> like, yeah. so much better than a Coachella show. Yeah, you got whatever. a fucking secret show for yourself. <laughs> That's dope. Um, but life's been busy. Uh, and so recently, one of these shows wasn't that well attended. So we were chatting about, like, concert tickets and prices. And, like, these are university shows, so they're is an argument to have free admission to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and the argument that I got back that I think really holds weight is like, 
if you have a show for free, people assume there's no value in it. So when right. you charge forty dollars for a ticket, now it is worth like now there's a commodity, there's a value to this thing, and mm -hmm. which is strange, right? You'd think that like people would go even if it's free, right. and it's like no, if it's free, you get less attendance because people think it's worthless and dumb and stupid. And once you add a little bit of cost to it, you're That's suddenly fair. professional, and legitimized, and now we'll have better attendance. Yeah, this to me is kind of equivalent to like the business email thing. Of like if you're accessible mm. through Instagram DM, then it almost is like a local band thing, and yeah. it's like it, yeah, it, it sure. almost takes you down a tier. And by forcing people through email. To some people, it's going to be a hurdle. And to some people, it's like, oh, this is legitimized. This is now right. a real thing. And I guess I'm saying it's an argument of like, maybe I should move out of my own DM <laughs> sometime and move into my well, email. Well, <laughs> I think the hurdle is like, if you want if, if you want the work, you'll do the hurdle. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'm, I'm about to bust my ass for you and make you something cool. Yeah. You know, so like, please, I, I, I spend like, I don't know how much a month on this fucking email. Please. <laughs> <laughs> But, and a, there's also, yeah. I think, a sense of like, ah, uh, oh, nuts. I had such a good idea right nuts. there. Um, nuts. <laughs> it, well, we're talking about the email thing, legitimizing it through yeah. the email. Fuck. Um, oh, there Two is chains. like a weeding out process that I think is important. Like you were saying, if you want the work, you will go to the email. Yeah. And I think that's important. And I think it's also important of like, this is part of why I want an idea from you. It's a weeding mm. out process. It's like, I don't want someone who isn't willing to do this bare minimum. Oh. What up, Jack? Oh my God, Jack, please come here. He gets so scared down here because he's not down here too much. Yeah. And whatever he is, it's new people, but he'll, he'll, he'll make it happen soon. Oh um, my God. But yes, I think that like weeding out process is so important to have. And it, it I, my joke is always that like, if you're going to become a surgeon, like there's a whole coll collegiate process mm -hmm. of weeding out and not that every surgeon's perfect. I'm sure there's dickhead surgeons, but like there's a, a way of weeding them out. Whereas for us, we just get whoever accesses us. Right. And as a result that it's like, yeah, you're going to get a whole pretty wide array of people. For sure. And it's nice to have these little yeah hurdles to separate like the, yeah, the, I don't know, almost like cokehead <laughs> ideas from like genuine yeah. person ideals. Of like yeah. the, We're going to start a business tonight from like the, okay, we've been working on this for six months. Yes, right, I'm right. happy to send an email. Kind of you know, and, it, and it's funny too, because like, I feel like I almost had that kind of crackhead thing where yep. I was like, this could be a business now. Yep. Fuck it. Try it. Um, Oh my God. Is he pick upable? He is chatting. Yeah. He'll be heard. <laughs> no, like pick upable, like <laughs> oh, yeah. in hand. Yes. Yes. Uh, he might be a little skittish at the moment, but yes, I hold him all the time. He's very happy to be held. Uh, when when he gets there, I don't know if my thoughts will come out clear until I hold. This <laughs> Give Mr. it a Man. try. I will entertain us okay. for the moment. Okay. Um, I'm curious to know about like starting a business for you. So this is something that I realize I'm now self-employed for I guess five years now. So <laughs> poor guy. Uh, 2020 Sorry. was my first year self-employed. So January 2020 is when I go. I'm going to do this. And to that point, I'd been doing it like part time and in school part time. And then I graduated school and it was like okay, let's give this an honest try before I enter the real job market. Yeah, and yeah. Thankfully, it worked. But of course, 2020 was a, a turbulent year, to say the least. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. so starting a business in, tw in January meant that March came around. And it was mm -hmm. very immediate, like, oh, no. This is <laughs> and, bad now. Yes. And yeah. I think since then, I've kind of taken the courage of, like, if I survived that with a little government assistance and all the other money that everyone <laughs> else got, then, like, yeah. if I can make it through that, if I can weather that storm, then I can weather any storm. But it still is a scary thing to be self-employed and to yes. be the one managing all that risk. Like, yeah. What motivated you to make the jump from, uh, in your words, like freelancer to business owner, what motivated that? And what's been, yeah, that process mm -hmm. like for you? Uh, to be honest, therapy, funny enough. Yeah. I, um, I started going to therapy like late last year, I think. Hell yes. I don't remember exactly when, but you know, I, um, I had one of these moments where like I'm not playing in any bands right now. I'm just kind of chilling and needing to do something. Um, and I freelance, but I don't really do it too much. And I don't have a comfy place in the house and all of this. And she was like, why don't you just like go grab a desk really quick and like make your side room, your office. And I was like, huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll try that. You know, went to Ikea, got a desk, uh, it's it's like our side it's like our spare bedroom in the house. Mm -hmm. So like the bed is all funny. We like we like decked it out in like dinosaur shit. So there's like dinosaur sheets and like okay. T Rex pillows and shit. But then the rest of the room is empty. Whoops. So I uh fucking just made a setup and I got like Hell yes. I got a monitor and I got like a little stand for my laptop that goes into the monitor. So I have my two monitors set up and just to like disconnect from the rest of the house mm -hmm. 
I have World of Warcraft downstairs. <laughs> so if I'm in the living room on my laptop and going downstairs, I'm playing WoW. You know? This was that's your his and her setup, right? Is the downstairs yeah. one that I remember? And yeah, so the upstairs, we have the two corners. Is the upstairs still his and hers, or is the upstairs only? The your upstairs office? is just my office. Hell yeah. Yes. Okay. It's too small for like a his and her situation. Gotcha. Which is the coolest shit ever, by the way. We see it, <laughs> I feel like on Twitter all the time I see like oh, his and hers gaming. I'm like, yeah, yeah he literally has yeah. that. Like, it's yeah. so sick. It's Rules. funny. Yeah, it's like there was a point where it was like wow boyfriend, runescape girlfriend. <laughs> And then a RuneScape got hacked, and then she ended up in like some crazy fucking like dungeon thing. And sure. She's like, "I wasn't here. Yep. How did I get here?" So now it's full WoW again. We got her brother into it. Nice new guild. We're going. Nice. Yeah. Having the office uh, does really make a big difference, and so I did a it, similar thing. It's huge. Yeah. And when did uh, I had my roommate Chris moved out to move in with his girlfriend like August maybe like mm-hmm. six months ago ish. Uh, and so I did the same thing. I moved my desk out of my bedroom into what was his bedroom and made that my office. And yeah, I didn't appreciate. I I joked for a while that I liked sleeping in the lab to use like the, yeah, the cliche yeah. experience that I kind of liked that I fell asleep looking at my computer and I woke up and the first thing that computer was screaming in my face going like, hey, bitch, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> What's up, motherfucker? Yeah. What you doing today? Because I know you've already spent time yeah, with me. That's it. Uh, it was something nice about that. And I think I romanticized that for a while. I think there is value to that of like, mm-hmm. Yeah, to be self-employed successfully, it has to be, especially at the beginning, has to be all-encompassing. There can be no yeah. no other endeavors happening. Like, it really has to it's be. It's rough, for uh, sure. Oh, yeah, your one-stop shop of, of attention, I guess. And for me, it's like that was a very important part. And then now that it feels like it's a business that is up and running, it's like, oh, it's great to have it in that room. And I, I spend more time in that room than my own bedroom. Yep. Like, let me be very clear yep. that I'm not working less by oh, any yeah. means. Oh, yeah. But it's nice that, yeah, I close the door and it's like, okay. It's go time. It's there. Yes. Yep. It exists there and it exists there only when I want it and I can close the door and have the rest of my apartment and not have to stare at this right. computer yelling at me to yeah. work all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely good to just have it separate. Mm-hmm. Um, we're moving everything into like an office space mm-hmm. soon. Hell yeah. Like um, a separate yeah. lease? Interesting. Just like okay. out of the house Hell completely. Yes. Um, and we as you and your partner are moving? Like, yeah. So is she starting a... Is she involved in the business as well? Um. Kind of. Okay. Okay. I, didn't I, 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 I call her the other half. <laughs> okay. Because she just helps me think. Sure. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, because it's kind of the whole thing is like, this is like the creative practice of me, but I have her to keep me steady mm-hmm. and keep my brain chilled out. And sure. If it's five o'clock, she's like, yo, what are you doing? You got to get out of there now. And I'm like, oh, this is really cool. And she's like, no, but you got to come on. Come on. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, helps me with balance and everything yes. and trying to balance real life and work life. The, um, yes, that but, is the ultimate challenge. Yeah. yeah. But when I say we, I um, I plan on interning students out of UHart, that the college. That is so I sick. To. Yeah. Uh, talk to me. Uh, tell me everything. So <laughs> I, I yeah. asked you because I was having a conversation with my family recently and they were kind of basically saying the same thing of like, I, at this point, I have enough work that it. It, I am stupid to do it all myself. Like the podcast yeah. is a great example of something that I really should outsource the editing. There's really no need for me mm. to be hands on with this. And it's like, it, it's a couple hours that is like watching the episode back. It used to be a good practice for me to like study the episodes and get of a course. sense. And now it's like, I think I've been doing it for long enough that I think I know where I'm good and where I'm bad. And I'm much more in touch with those. I don't need to review the tape yeah, to yeah. be aware of it. Of course. Uh, and so it's like, yeah, that is something that I could so easily outsource. But in my brain, it seems like more work to find someone to outsource and then to teach them how I want it done. Yeah. And then to keep them accountable. Like it just, it seems like more work than it would save me. So I'm very curious to hear how you would approach an intern. Because yeah. obviously businesses do that. It is a normal thing. And mm-hmm. I just can't figure out how to apply it to my own right. business. Um, I think I got lucky with where I went to school Mm -hmm. and kind of the connections that I got through that. Um, I, uh, when I graduated, I was like in, in school, we had like a group of like five designers that were like really, really good. And then I'm not saying that the other ones weren't good, but there was definitely a clear line of like people who really wanted to do this Mm -hmm. after graduation and people who were just like, I heard this makes me money, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. So, I keep I keep in touch with a lot of those people, um, and I um I used to be on the board for this thing called the CADC. It's a uh, nonprofit, kind of just like well, they might not be a nonprofit. I I don't remember. They're exactly. good people. <laughs> They're great people though, and it's yeah. like it's like a big community of designers and artists within Connecticut that have like big award shows and all okay. this stuff, and. Uh, 
the new president is like he used to be in hardcore. Back for more. That's right. I won't pick you up this time, but I will look at you and say hi. <laughs> hey. He'll say hi right back. Wow. Uh non profit, yeah. maybe not non profit. <laughs> yeah. I, I forget. well because like I don't know if you would consider it a non profit if you have like a award show that you charge yeah. for tickets. Yeah. But you know whatever yeah. it, it's cool it's really really a charitable neat. company yeah it's dope <laughs> yeah and they're very very sweet and the guy that is the president of it mike marks he like used to be in hardcore like playing drums and like og connecticut hardcore bands is really dope so like we connected um and then just like through that and still being connected with my college mm -hmm. and like i go get panera with my professors you know gotcha. yeah, yeah, so yeah. like it, it's having all of those connections and kind of you know knowing like who's like the best student right now and like mm -hmm. this and that there's this kid uh his name is Arik, and he's on the board of the he's like on the education board for the cadc right now and he's graduating this year and i've just been like so i mentor him um uh, okay and Great. so yeah, yeah, yeah. just having that connection of like somebody that i mentor and like I look over his work and we go and we chill and like, it's just good to have those connections because mm -hmm. then if like, I have a lot of clients coming in right now that are like monthly retainer clients, mm -hmm. which is something I haven't taken on before. Um, and with that, it's like, if this is going to be a constant string of work every month, I might need help, mm -hmm. you know? So that's kind of been where that is slowly coming and together. How do you delegate what tasks you get help on? So I think mm -hmm. part of this for me is like in the, I guess to use the music video example, part of the issue to me is like, I don't feel like I can give away any of the processes without affecting the other ones. Right. So mm -hmm. if you, if you come to me for a music video, like I, it's not fair to, you want me to edit it, right? You want me involved. And so of course. at a certain point, it's like, uh, if I have you review the footage and like help me find some of the best shots and cut out some of the crap and sync stuff up, I, I think as I go through the process personally, as I review the footage, I'm making mental notes that right. I don't always appreciate in value. And then there's some okay. point three quarters of the way through the video where I go, oh, there was this one shot that I never would have known about. It yeah. just be, you know, so I'm saying I feel like if I delegate this part, then I lose this. And if I delegate like the color, like the final touches, like, no, you want me to do the final touches. Like I don't yeah. know what I can give away without giving away the product. And I'm in the context sure. of design, it's like, if I was contacting your intern, I don't know what I would have asked for an intern to do that I like would have been comfortable with them doing instead of you doing. Right. And so I'm curious how you like, separate these tasks and how you yeah keep ownership of the project while yeah. still accepting help in the creative process. Of course. Um, I think with design in particular, um, a lot of it is like say, because again, it's like all my creative practice. Mm -hmm. So like, when it comes to the creative stuff, it's still mostly me. Mm -hmm. But say there's packaging for a box for cans of water, you know, and you have like liquid death cans, you know, and you have the box and this one is like black and gold. And now this is a new flavor and this has to be like red and this and then gotcha. it yeah, to be yeah, this yeah. and that. It's like we, you know, we go over all the stuff and like, he like other people can help me with that. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, it's still just me. I, I, I haven't done the intern thing yet. Mm -hmm. It's in talks right now, but like I, you know, it, it is just me. So if I do it, eventually need help with like, there's going to be three new flavors of this drink, which right. means three new boxes, but all of the designs are going to look like this one, just different colors while I'm doing this part. Can you, produce these colors of this yeah, option yeah, yeah. and da, 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 da. yeah and then there's so much more that goes into it with like a more streamlined process of like logo presentation and like for example with your logos it had like that little orange bar on the bottom and it was mm -hmm. like this is this idea this is why i did it you know stuff like that um just anything that can kind of keep my brain from completely imploding yes <laughs> you know yeah. Because I, regardless, it's like it's still me doing the work and yep. it's 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 us doing the work, but it is all produced kind of it starts here and then it I you know. come back to this like central uh moral dilemma for myself. And I think when we uh the the example I use, and I guess part of this is 
to understand how my brain works is my brain finds the extreme and then kind of works back into a more normal ground. And so mm-hmm. the extreme in this scenario to me is the like the Picassos and the Da Vinci's and all these like mid set, whatever I was saying, mid century, but I don't know what mid century means. <laughs> I have no idea when they were alive. <laughs> all these it. old artists do. Dude, made cool I stuff. had to take like <laughs> so many art history classes and I don't know. I don't remember shit. <laughs> Great. I just know that Caravaggio was dope and he made really cool dark paintings and they're all cool. That's Hell yeah. I'll have to look into those. But uh, <laughs> with the exception of Caravaggio, that he's speaking of all the other guys, other but guys, all like, yeah. the famous artists who have like their understudies. Like I, yeah. I always hear the understudies almost like a critique of them like no one is like oh picasso so great because a hundred other people painted his stuff and i don't know if this is true yeah, for yeah, picasso, yeah. but in the context of those yeah great old artists it's always like yeah he was great but actually there were 15 guys below him who did all the work and it just yeah. this guy put his name on it and then put a brown stroke one place on it and <laughs> called it his and it's like yeah. that's a critique like that is not a. we're not saying that like wow look at the empire he built we're saying yeah. like Look at this fucker who outsourced stuff and took credit for it. Like, how right. shitty is that? Yeah. And so I don't know how I fit into that, where it's like, I understand that my business will grow if I'm able to outsource and take on more mm-hmm. people. But I come back to this thing of like, I don't want to be the guy who's a dickhead for, you know, yeah. growing the empire. Like, that's not a thing we commend, I think. I think in the art world, more specifically, it's like, if you outsource, you tell people that you outsourced. Sure. Yeah. You know? Um, if you're if you're a team, like a design team, all all of the names are on it. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing like a case study on a website and I uh, hit up a friend from college to do an illustration because I just don't have the time to draw right now, her name's going on everything, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that people miss that point sure and it's the same thing with photo and video where like someone takes a photo and like revolver uses that sorry and you know they don't put a name on it yeah and they're like well what the fuck that's my photo yep you're taking credit for my shit yes um and something that because this is still all so scary and new to me like the idea of like being business guy and like having an LLC rather than mm-hmm. just being like, here's me, what's up? You know? <laughs> yeah. It's fucking terrifying. Yeah. And it's all weird. Yep. And but the the kind of thing for me that I I I notice with like big firms and like companies that exist, when you start to say build that empire, there's a point where you just don't do shit anymore. <laughs> and yeah. like you yeah. talk to clients, you yeah. set up the notion thing that make sure everyone's on task and doing their thing, Mm -hmm. but then you don't do shit anymore, but it's your company. Yep. And yeah, good for you, you know, because your wallet's happy. Yeah. Well, because, and everybody's happy, Yeah. you know, and cause that's what they want to do eventually is kind of like lead a team. Yeah. And I love that premise as well. Like I love helping. I love educating. I love helping people learn. I love being, I don't, I don't like being in charge. Like I don't look at myself as like, the big fucking kahuna and everybody's below me. Mm -hmm. I hate that shit. Yeah. So like, I think that's where it kind of like, I would hate to be in a position where this is my company, but I don't do a fucking thing Mm -hmm. and I'm not hands on with anything. I heard some statement that it's like, uh, uh, the irony of self-employment is if you succeed enough, it becomes a nine to five again. And it's yeah. exactly that. It's that you you grow your company so much that eventually you're not doing the art you started. And all you're doing is yeah. managing people. And, yeah. I, and that, yeah, that's the other thing to me. It's like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just almost at like Peter Pan. What is it? It's like Peter Pan syndrome or whatever. Like we want to be a kid your whole life. Like it's almost <laughs> yeah. that where it's yeah. like I'm almost happy in this in between. And it's like the goal is to grow as big as I can in a pond and not have to deal with the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's it's, not it's, quite perfect. Well, either. It's, it's not. But. I think it's possible. Like, I think it's possible to be in that in between. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, for me, I I think I have, like, this fucked up thing about me where I don't like being under a boss. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's not because of, like, the boss position is a bad position. I've just had bad luck. Mm-hmm. And, like, getting thrown out into the ocean as a designer, yep. You get these experiences that almost always suck. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then yeah, it's yeah. like, all right, thanks for the opportunity. I'm just gonna do this myself. Yep. But then now I'm in a I'm in a position where like the the whole idea of making this a company was just so I could have a room, write it off, and make like a co op space. So like if people need a place to work, mm-hmm. there's a desk. Come hang out. We'll listen to music. We'll fucking work on something. You know. And that was the initial idea. 
And I think just with it, it's like, I want it to be fun. Yep. I don't want you to feel like shit doing what you like to do. I, yeah. I, that's all I did. And, you know, being like big designer guy, like coming out of school, like I had a chance to work at Pentagram, which is like the biggest agency in fucking ever. <laughs> okay, cool. And like, I could have just relocated to New York and got a spot. Yep. But I didn't. And then you get thrown into like these jobs in your area. Um, but in Connecticut, like there's not really anything central. It's like if you live in central, you're driving to New Haven, you're driving yeah. to fucking Ridgefield, you're driving an hour plus to get to wherever. Um, and then you get there and it's just not the best for you. Like mm -hmm. maybe you're not a good fit or you're, you don't feel like a good fit. Yeah. Um, but when I was a kid, I, uh, I, it was kind of like an intern thing. I essentially worked under a table at this place. So I'm not going to say <laughs> sure. the place, you know, uh, I got you. I, I won't, I won't throw you under the Shout bus. Out, fam. Shout out Mr. Guy, the guy who helped me out when I was 15. Hell um, yeah. it was an agency close to me. And I remember walking in the first time and that fool pulled up on a razor scooter. It was like, welcome. Come back here. And there's a dog running around. Yep. Yep. There's rock band drums and a projector on the wall. And it was like, if you're not feeling work, go outside, play a video game, make a coffee, go get food, do whatever. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, And that was like my coolest experience. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Was How like, long were you there? Uh, like a year. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Because it, yeah, it was yeah. just like a thing that I could do like over the summer and then I went back to school and then next summer and then left. Um. But that's where I learned how to, I learned how to code there. I learned how to uh, do like lyric videos and After Effects. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, I fucking hate those dude, so much, they dude. They suck. <gasps> and I did a terrible one for uh, Low Points. Shout way, out. Wait, shout out Low Points. Shout out. Way back Currently in the day. Currently low, still banging low, low 413. Low period, there. right? Yes, yeah. They're yeah. the music videos. They yeah. Those guys are the best. Yeah. Love them all. Yes. And we toured together. Hell yes. And we went to Skatetopia and one of those fools got branded on his butt. Yo, they literally told that story on the show. Really? I'm 99% sure. Because Holy I feel like, fuck. I feel like I've heard that story and it's possible I heard on a music video set and I just overshared, yeah. but I'm almost yeah. positive it was on the show. Yeah, okay, well, if we <laughs> overshared, sorry. He got branded straight on his ass. Hell yeah. And it was it definitely got infected I'm and it was 99% fucked up. sure they told it on Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a weird experience that was. They're nuts. <laughs> not, I'm not built for that. Nope. I just hang out and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Can we leave? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um. Yep. Oh, oh, fuck. I did the thing. I did the did tangent the thing. thing. Uh, this, who cares? Low rules. Let's just talk about low yeah. some more. Oh, I remember. I remember. <laughs> the agency. I do want to yeah. talk about yeah, yeah, low because yeah. you guys are cool and I love you all. Um, but yeah, that agency was like the coolest experience I've ever had. And it was like I was still in high school. Yep. You know, like it was just like a thing that I did sometimes. And I got to learn all these things, work at a desk, work in a big, cool, renovated bolt factory. Like it was cool. Yep. You know? Um. You don't get that anymore unless you move to New York, you know? Yes. And then you just hear like horror stories and all this stuff. And I'm just transparent. I'm just like a transparent guy. Mm -hmm. Like I, I told the buddy that I want to enter and I'm like, hey, man, just being real monetarily, I don't know what I could do for you. Yep. I got to get some groceries. You know what I mean? Like I still got to yeah. get my shit together yep. and I'm still learning, but there's a project coming in that I might need help with. Do you want to help? Yep. You know, and we could do this shit together and then eventually yep. maybe we work together. I think I've got the same thing. You mentioned that you don't like having a boss and I would push back and say that it's not the boss or for me, at least it's not the boss. It's that it's that I don't want to have to like not be myself. And when right. I'm around a boss, I have to try and please them. And that's the part I think yeah. of a standard job that is so terrifying to me. It's like, yeah, I, I don't have that in me. I have to be me. I have to be me at all times. Yep. And anything that impedes on that is like a, a, an act of aggression almost. Yeah. Where like sitting in, yeah, Dude, sitting fuck. in those like corporate yep. things is almost like, uh, like it, it feels like they are actively suppressing me, which is yeah. not what they're doing. They're running a business. Yeah, they're probably just, just not doing interested their job. in yeah. me caring about soccer. Like I get why. <laughs> I get why. Yeah. If I work at Amazon, they don't have time to care about me and right. soccer. But right. like, the flip side to me is like, I, yeah, I, I don't succeed in a place where i can't be me that right. the idea of suspending me 
is so just impossible. And that's been of all my jobs in my life. Like I started my first real job is refereeing soccer, which is yeah, crazy. Be me. Then it's yeah. working at summer camp, which is like I have to be a little responsible for kids, but I'm right. I'm playing with four year olds more than I'm entering information. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm still, yeah, being me. And then yeah, as this business has come together, I've yeah, worked at a school for kids with autism, which again is cool. just like, yeah, be a human being and show them what yeah. a human being is. It's not academic. Yeah, it's just not, show what respect is yeah. and just being a person. And yeah. I think as I reflect on yeah, where I've succeeded and where I failed, it's like, yeah, the failures were just I I felt like I was oppressed in a way that didn't let me be me. Yeah. And as long as I can be me, I'm happy. Everything else of is course, good from yeah, there. But yeah. yeah, I agree with you that like that's kind of a, a central thing that almost defines my business is like yeah. I'm going to be me at all costs. And it's it's it'll funny be that transparent. You, yeah. It's funny that you say that because like the act of aggression kind of thing. Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. I feel that. I uh I had this position where I kind of I, I don't like working on monitors usually. Mm-hmm. I, I hate it. I, I love being, you could probably see it in this, my, my posture, <laughs> I look like a fucking troll, right? Dude, I'm so but, bad, yeah. Holy shit. Well, I work yeah. at a computer every day, so I'm fucking hunched oh, yes. over like a oh, dumbass. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, like I like being in my little corner. I yep. like doing my thing. Um, And they had really cool monitors there. They were sick. Thanks. I don't really want to plug into it. But then it's like, well, you should definitely plug into the monitor if you're going to be here. But like, I just don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't want to. Like, yeah. my setup at home, like, I have a monitor because I do need the two screens. But, like, you know how they have, like, the magic mouse where it's, like, a little wireless mouse for, like, Mac? But then they also have a wireless trackpad that feels like a laptop. That's what I use because I want it to feel like a laptop even though I'm looking at a monitor. Interesting. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. But it's just how I grew up designing. Yeah. Um, I just did a, uh, I did a presentation at my college like last month talking about that and just like how I came up in design and like where, how I started my kind of journey through it. And that was one of the things that like really just like stuck was like, you use like track pens and you really like laptops. I'm like, yeah, I do. Shit's dope. Yeah. But I just, I mean, you see it like in my work, like I am fucking brutally me. Black, white, orange. Are you sure you don't like black, white, orange? Come on. It looks so cool. <laughs> you know? We did that. We did. You're like, I like blue. And I was like, what about orange? And you're like, yeah, that's pretty dope. <laughs> that works. Oh, yep. shit. Uh, hell yeah. 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 The blue and orange was a... Uh, yeah. Blue's always a comfort zone. But I guess orange feels feels more like this. This feels more well, orange. Well, when I blue, walk into but, here, it's just like super warm. And like... Yeah. Even... I think when I was saying that like it felt different, it was because some of the lights were off. And it just felt very homey, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's super neat. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm yeah, working on that. Feeling. Yeah, that's a, uh, an important piece of this to me is to have a space that I want to be in that I'm happy to bring other people. Of course. So I'm always working yeah. on yeah, tweaking that. And it's good to have good to have yeah. good feedback on that. Uh, I wanted to add on that there's a there's a music video director named Cole Bennett who runs a company okay. called Lyrical Lemonade. And they've done videos like they're the head of like the SoundCloud rap that brings up Trippy Red and Juice World mm-hmm. and all these guys is kind of through them. And Cole's gone on to have a warehouse. He's about our age-ish. And I, okay. uh, I'm i bummed. Uh, the State of the Scene was on here an episode or two ago. Shout out to them. They ruled. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they asked me who my dream interview was. And I gave some very polite answer that I don't know, that everyone's cool. It's Cole Bennett. Cole Bennett yeah. is the dream interview. That's what I should have said. <laughs> it's a dream interview. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he does exactly what you have. of Like this huge warehouse where all his buddies are. And like one of the rooms is just a 90s room. So it was just filled with like Simpsons collectibles and posters yeah, and like a TV that is only playing cartoons at all times. And it's this idea so of like, sick. yeah, when work is too much, go hang out in this place yeah, and just, just do something absorb else. nostalgia. And his, his motif is a very similar thing of like, I'm going to bring the people I like to do stuff we want to do. Yep. And that's what it's going to be. And you're going to like it or you're yeah, not going to like it, but it's going to be, this is how it will be. That's it. And it is. Yeah. That's the model. That's it's the goal. like, be transparent. You don't have to be fucking crazy professional. Yeah. And like, that was also a, a worry of mine going into this whole space was like, I am a company now. I'm a business, mm-hmm. but like, I also just exist here. Like right now I'm not in a space. I'm in my fucking house. So like, am I mm-hmm. about me or something on, my website right now that I'm trying, I've been right rewriting it. Worst, yeah. It sucks. I hate yep. it. But I was just like, dude, I just sit in my house. I sit in my house, my cat meows, my girlfriend hangs out, and that's what we do. Yep. That's it. You know what I mean? And like if I'm not feeling the work, I will go to Purgatory. Shout out Purgatory. I'll go outside. I'll fucking I'll do anything. Yeah. I'll play World of Warcraft. I'll be in Orgmar just sitting there looking at the mount I have and I'm like, Wow, that's cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't 
I'm getting better at that. I think I, I, instead of taking time off, what I tend to do is find a different project and I tend to have enough projects open that there's stuff in def- enough different stages that when mm-hmm. I get tired of the, yeah, the final steps of this project, it's like, okay, this one's in the early steps. Let's go yeah. play in that sandbox. Of course. Instead. Uh, I've been to, yeah. trying to do that too. Yeah. Like, so instead of playing World of Warcraft during the day, I can like <laughs> maybe do something responsible. Yes. You know? uh, I, I have that yeah. same impulse of me where to me, it's like, I'm going to be self-employed. I have to do it my way. And part of that means playing video games at noon if I want to. Yep. And I'm trying to re- rewire my brain of like the video games at five o'clock when I have the day done are so much more enjoyable rather than playing from noon to two and the whole time in the back of your brain going like, I got to go back. Fuck, that fuck, fuck, fuck. That one thing I've been <laughs> avoiding all day. Motherfucker. And yeah. For me, like it's it recently has been green screen stuff that I've been yeah. working on and loving, but there's always parts of that process that are just stressful and cumbersome and annoying. And I do everything in my power. Yesterday I started redoing my website and it's like, this nice. is the busiest month of my life. I don't have time to redo my website. Right. I'm but just procrastinating. There. I'm Dude, just avoiding holy- Fuck, I, I did that yesterday, but I because I'm working on my website to yeah. finish it up. But I yeah. also started making a playlist yeah. for like what I work yeah, to yeah, and yeah. listen to. And I'm like, wow, ZBDC playlist <laughs> coming yep. soon. Fucking sick. Why the fuck am I doing that? And yeah. now I have a whole separate section on my website that says listen. Yep. So you could click in and find the playlist when I don't need that. I need to finish the fucking website. Yep. And now I'm adding shit. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. I was procrastinating shirts and I started, yeah, reorganizing uh-huh. and readjusting the layout and the templates and the wording of the about me and deleting this. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, that resonates. Gonna lose my fucking mind. That's so funny. <laughs> it's it's just related. I think it's just all self employment shit. It's fucking terrible, <laughs> yep. but it's awesome because yes. you get to do everything how you wanna do it. Yeah. I've found a lot of comfort also in like looking at like, construction and like if i was building huh. a house it's so like and using that as because i think the creative process makes everything muddy and it makes me like mm. emotionally tied to stuff when you probably don't need to be right in sometimes or in some senses and so i like to try and like put it yeah in the context of a construction of like i'm building the floor today like fuck this whole house like just <laughs> make sure this floor is smooth today yeah. and that's all i have to do just find a way to get that done and yeah somehow, i've been trying yeah, to do that too i get that different context makes life easy i think trying to do that with time management is my biggest struggle sure i think is like Kind of saying, like, I'm going to do the floor from 9 to 5 today. But then I'm like, oh, but that wall is really cool looking. Or the yeah. thought of the wall would be really cool. And now yep. I'm sitting at my computer till 11 at night. Yep. You know? And it's like, well, I should probably go to sleep at before midnight to wake up at 9 tomorrow. And now you wake up at 10, 30. And stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? I woke like, up at 1 p.m. twice this week. And fuck, was so dude. confused and mad it at myself. It sucks. It's the worst. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I don't know, man. At the end of the day, it's like... The idea of like, it's not like creative freedom. Well, it is because you're doing the creative stuff, but it's like the freedom of just like being able to provide for your people and live and exist in your comfy way, doing what you like to do. And I think that like everywhere I've been at since leaving school, it just wasn't me. Like, I'm not the guy to, like, go get cocktails after work, obviously. I, 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 yeah. Or mocktails, yeah. Or mock- I'm I, the same I, way. Yeah. I'd fuck around with a mocktail. Okay. Kalina makes insane mocktails. Oh, yeah, shout out. Shout out, Kalina. I love you. <laughs> shout out the mocktail queen. I love queen. you, darling. That's right. <laughs> Fucking mocktail queen. That's what you're with her for, dude. That's right. All the other relationships stuff is fine and dandy, yep. but the mocktails. The mocktails. <laughs> mocktails and wow, dude. What the hell Turn else? it the fuck up. <laughs> mocktail time. Holy shit. <laughs> Fucking squishing berries and shit. <laughs> Mixing them with some delicious juice. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Bubbles in there. Come huge, on now. Dude. That's huge. Bubbles in we there. We need to stop doing this because I keep forgetting what I was talking about. Who cares what you're talking about? I don't about. fucking care, man. It's my show, dude. That's right. Fucking fuck me. I'm leaving and I'm taking Jack with me. Where is he? That's the first time I'll have a problem with you all day. He's over there hanging out on my putting mat. I love He likes Jack. to keep it warm. Um, what was I saying? Um, who knows? Something about oh, Jack. Oh, I remember. Well, I pr- it probably isn't, but I'm just going to go That's off okay. on this one now. <laughs> cool. I No, I do remember. I'm not cocktail guy. I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, eh, I'm the same way. Yeah. I'm, I just want to do my shit the way I like to do it. But also, I want to provide a space for people to do that, too. Yep. So, like. I like if, that. Yeah. If we work together and you don't like being fucking eagle eyed over your over your shoulder, I hate that. Yep. If I uh, if I feel this is this is probably super like uh uh what's the word vulnerable sure. I guess but I have Tourette's um and 
they don't show all the time. And usually I'm good at kind of fucking cutting it out and chilling. But really the biggest time it'll start to happen is like shit like that at work. Like if someone's looking over my shoulder while I'm working, unless I ask you to be here, please get the fuck away from me. You know what I mean? I, sorry. It, no, no, you're good. It, it's just like a, I have ways of doing things. And if I can't do them that way, I start to freak out. It's just a, it's a mental game for me. Can I ask how your Tourette's expresses itself? I, I've um, heard so many. Yeah, I know there, there yeah. are a bunch of different ways. And if you're, yeah, if yeah, you'd rather move on, I'm happy to move uh, on as well. No, I, uh, I'll talk about but, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> uh, I'm very unfamiliar with Tourette's as a, yeah, I know the basics of it, but I'm curious of yeah, yeah. what it's an actual human experience. Uh, so there's, if I remember correctly, because I don't really look into it too sure. much, there's motor tics, mm-hmm. which is like movements yeah i'm pretty sure and yeah. then there's like verbal which is like and we always hear about the verbal yeah because it's like haha fuck shit small ass small minority of, yeah yeah it's like the people saying like you're gonna blow something up in, in a public space and then i also think i'm just gonna go off real quick i think tiktok glorifying it is fucked up sure yeah i think it's fucking terrible yeah. Yeah. i do think there's sometimes where you'll see like a barber with tourette's cutting a kid's hair that also has Tourette's and they fucking, they feed off each other and it's just mm-hmm. go time, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but it, there, there's yeah. something sweet about that sure. and that comfortability with each other. Yep. But like the people being like, Oh my God, Tourette's are so cute. Oh my God. You whistle. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just don't like it it's, uh, for yeah. me at least. Like I, this sucks. People love to say that they're on the spectrum. And for me, it's like I worked at a school for kids with autism and I've, yeah. I've seen what it is to be on the spectrum. And I'm not saying that if it's a spectrum, by definition, there's a range to it. But right. it's a similar. Yeah, I can relate to the glorification of it. People love to be like, oh, I spurged out on this. And it's like, yeah. ah, I don't it, know if you did. <laughs> it's like the self-diagnosis thing. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I, I honestly think it might just be like a lower generation thing. And I feel, God, I, I, I mean, I'm not old, I guess, but. I guess there are generational differences. Yeah, now I'm sure I've made fun of things that probably shouldn't be made fun of right. too. I'm not gonna. But, yeah, but like <laughs> I'm I think in no glass house to throw stones. But. <laughs> but it's like it's the idea yeah. of like younger generation is like, oh my god, that is so cute that you're you're so gorgeous for ticking. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. You know, uh, and like for me, it's like. When I was a kid, I I found out about it in middle school. It was the first day of sixth grade. So it was like my first. That's the worst time to learn about it. It was my first day of middle school, dude. dude. And I was in line. (laughs) I remember being in line, lining up for homeroom. It was the first time you ever, you're ever in homeroom. You don't know what that fucking means. You're just in a line. I'm I'm nervous. I'm clutched up. Yeah. (laughs) I'm in a new school. Yeah. I just left my comfy (laughs) elementary school and now I'm in like this bigger school. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. Right. You never realize that you wouldn't be the biggest kid in your school. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you're just there and you're just like, holy fuck. Okay. Go. Yeah. New school. Yeah. New principles, new rules. I don't fucking know. Sure. But like, yeah, I remember being in line and just like my eyes will do like this really tense squeezing thing. And then they start going left, right, left, right, left, right. And that's how it started. And then, over time, it was kind of just like kids would be like, oh, fucking with your eyes dry. You need eye drops. And then I got called drops in, in middle school. Interesting. And then that was like, that's why the glorification thing irks me because it's like, dude, yeah. fuck you. Yeah. I got I got like I got like movie scene bullied gotcha. in school growing up. And that's gotcha. why like in music and things, I was always very like, be yourself. Fuck everybody else. Sure. Be your own person. You want to wear makeup? Do it. You want to wear big pants? Fucking do it. You want to wear little pants? Do it. Chains, makeup, fucking nails painted. Who gives a fuck? Do you. Like, be you, you know? Yeah. Because I, I did that yeah. my whole life, and I got fucking essentially just beat up for it constantly, Damn. you know? Um. So, yeah, I always preach that, and that's why I think certain things like, when people are like, I have Tourette's. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, maybe you tick and like, yeah, but also like, I don't know. You don't have to. Tick. We all have quirks. And it's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like, you yeah. don't have to, to like be yeah. like, I'm this, you know? Yep. Um, yep. But yeah, it started like that. The fucking 
the eye thing. And then over time, it started to get verbal, but it's not like the oh, whole, shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm not just like, fuck you. Yeah. Or like looking at my principal in school and like, fuck. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I probably did that on purpose just because I didn't <laughs> like him. But yeah, yeah it, it was more just like, like, whoa, whoa. Interesting. And it's just, yeah, even doing that right now, my brain's like, oh, oh shit, don't start, you know? But yeah, it's just like noises or like, it, it's weird. Certain sounds and certain mouth feels of words. I know it sounds insane. I know somebody yeah. listening will get it. Yeah. But like, the, you know, I like a mouth feel like when you understand. eat, yeah, you know, sort of. like yeah, it's yeah. kind of like that Yeah, where like the way your mouth moves or your jaw moves with this sound or this word, it just does something yeah, yeah, in yeah. like here. It's scratching an itch yeah. is the only, essentially, yeah. yeah. yeah parallel. And it's just, it's just ticks, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's shit like that. Um, So that's how it's been essentially like my whole life or since like baby me, I guess. Yeah. So oh, yeah. I'm able to kind of chill with it more um but there was a bad point and then that's when it first started to happen and everybody was like oh and i was like and then it's worse and then yeah yeah and then once you're aware of it i'm sure it's yeah it's yeah now you're trying to suppress a thing that is happening inevitably and now Mm -hmm. there's this whole other level of conflict unfolding and yeah i think since i'm like i think music helped because like music is and like even if I'm not playing in any bands right now, like it it's that's that's my life. Mm-hmm. Music has always been my life. And the reason we're into music is because we're fucking weird. All of us are weirdos. <laughs> Speak for yourself. You're a fucking weirdo, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> we're all weird. No, <laughs> don't say that. I just found out. <laughs> You're a fucking weirdo too. If you're listening, you're also fucking weird. And that's why we're all in it together. You know? Like shit. I I I got into hardcore as a I remember I was in Camp Matasha, which was like this little fucking camp in Connecticut. Okay. And some kid was like I remember he had fucking like webbed feet and he had like four toes on each foot and it blew my mind. And I I'll remember to this day, he's like, You ever listen to Hate Breed? And I was like, No. And he's like, Listen to Hate Breed. And I'm like, Does it sound like Pantera? And he's like, ah, Listen to Hate Breed, you know? And he showed me like destroy everything or something mm-hmm. and my life was fucking changed. And just you you once you start going to shows and you accept the fact that like shows are your escape and mm-hmm. that's where you can let go and people will judge you. People are there's shitty people everywhere. But it's it's a place for you to just be you and you could exist. Mm-hmm. And you're not in school getting bullied for wearing Toms and skinny jeans. You're not, and and then a couple of years go by, and now you're wearing Jinkos again, and you're not getting, or you're getting made fun of in school, but not, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard some analysis. Um, I wish I could credit. I want to say it was from the Downbeat, maybe Craig. I yeah, someone music okay. related. And I wish I could source who said to this. Or the Downbeat is dope. Um, yeah, shout out. Um, but it was something to the effect of how like. Uh, going to hardcore shows is almost like being a superhero and it's this weird thing of like during the day you're Bruce Wayne and you have to be Bruce Wayne and then at night you get to go be Batman and this yeah. Webster Underground that the rest of your school doesn't give a fuck about. No one else thinks it's cool Dude. but to you it's the coolest thing in the world yeah. and it's almost going back to school the next day you almost have this ego of like Oh, you fuckers don't know what you I just did. You don't know I'm Bruce shit. Wayne. You have no idea all the That's crime right, I fought last night. And I, I like that as a duality. And I think part of yeah. that is, uh, as a kid, I was a Batman fan, uh, <laughs> big Batman guy. <laughs> yeah. And somehow in my brain, I swear my life has been like, I've always lived my life as if I am Batman, which sounds so absurd to say, but somehow in the way that like I've internalized my own story, it's always been in this yeah, yeah, in that context. And somehow that was a really interesting piece of it to me. It's like, yeah, I love that I'm Bruce Wayne yeah. and I get to have this little Batman thing. You have is, this you have this world. That yeah. is unique to you and I, but yeah. most of the world will never give a fuck about anything it, at the Webster Underground. It's the coolest <laughs> but shit to ever. Us it's heaven, yeah. it, because yeah. like you go to like say like a family gathering and they're like, Okay, well, did you get a job? Because touring is obviously not gonna make you money. Yeah. And that and that's that's it. Yep. That's usually what you get. Yep. And then you have people in school. Like, I remember sitting in a coffee shop with Kalina, like, pretty recently. And I was just, we love people watching. <laughs> Dude, I'm, yes. Holy fuck. <laughs> that is my whole job at concerts. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. think it's just, like, the ADHD that's just, like, <laughs> yeah. gotta yeah. look, gotta look, gotta yeah. look. Yeah. But I just remember seeing, like, a couple people walk by. 
and there was somebody that like kind of looked like us, you know, like probably wearing black, had a couple tattoos, mm -hmm. you know. But then like you start to really think and it's like there's a chance that like none of these people have any any ounce of idea what hardcore is mm -hmm. or what metalcore is or somebody who walked by probably doesn't listen to music. <laughs> like they probably drive in silence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. And having that like realization yep. is weird as fuck, but it's also really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel super lucky to be involved with something that is so niche. Whereas even right now, like hardcore is like blowing up. Yep. Like shout out TikTok, I guess, and like it's becoming like very like MTV big. Mm -hmm. Like if MTV was currently about music and not like Rob Deerdeck Fantasy yeah. Factory all the time. Yep. Or no, it's not even Fantasy Factory. It's probably uh what's Ridiculousness. the one? Ridiculousness. Yeah. Cause it's fucking Fantasy Factory was dope. <laughs> that shit rules. Ridiculous dude. Ridiculousness was also dope. But then like Ridiculousness he, is the best hotel show. In hotels, yeah. I only watch Ridiculousness and Wrestling. And they're <laughs> the two worst things. Sorry, I was probably wrestling fans here. Sorry to offend you, but oh, not man. my cup of tea. But in hotels, <laughs> ridiculousness and wrestling dude, are oh, dope. Chef's kiss. So I'm I'm glad that you have that select two things to fucking just chill in I hotel. will never watch them anywhere else, but I feel somehow like, in a hotel it's Oh, yeah, the perfect. I feel like when I'm in a hotel, I always open up the TV and it's like either the news mm -hmm. for a place that I'm not from. Yep. So you don't know anything that's happening or any of the places where it's like 50 yep. or 60 degrees. It's like yep. just random place. You're like, okay, cool. I'll never be there in my life. <laughs> yeah. Or it's like one of those fucking like those uh uh where they like tow truck or they tow cars and shit. <laughs> and it's like their yeah, whole yeah, thing Discovery is to Channel, like, yeah, yeah, to shows, like yeah. piss people off and steal their cars. <laughs> and they're like, get over here, give me my truck. And they like take their fucking truck and they're yeah, fucked forever. Yeah. yeah, shit rules. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Shout out stealing cars. <laughs> dude, someone stole my fucking car. When we, we played This Is Hardcore, I didn't know Philly was notorious for uh, <laughs> like getting your shit towed. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we went out we to the- We got towed or stolen? Oh, okay, okay yeah. yeah they stole it <laughs> fuckers yeah, yeah and yeah we were like at the merch table turned around and everything like we just watched like a homie's car get towed and we we're like oh, no shit looked over right here Zay! and i'm like what <laughs> there goes my car yeah and then we had to find out the law and sit in a fucking building for like an hour trying to get it i've heard nightmares about it oh, yeah dude. i haven't I haven't had the privilege of getting yeah. happened but uh whatever philadelphia myself. For, first and only time <laughs> never go back and i hope yeah no F fucking i hope i never ever get towed ever again that just sucked um oh my god i talked about getting towed and now i'm lost that's sick um <laughs> that's I sick don't know. uh yeah getting towed is cool uh <laughs> we're, we're we got, talking about we got through all the health conversation hotel um hotel shows ridiculousness mtv the, hardcore uh, hardcore being cool hardcore cool and how we have music we're batman we're batman <laughs> Okay, we're back. Yeah. We're so we're, fucking we're back so right fucking now. Back, That's right, bitch. We're so fucking back. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, this whole thing derailed. Uh, you mentioned having someone going over your shoulder, and from there we went down that one avenue. Oh, my God. Uh, the I other forgot piece about of this that. that I wanted to ask is I'm always envious of audio engineers. Or uh, uh, di not disdainful. What's the opposite of jealous? Um, glad I'm not an audio engineer. <laughs> <laughs> because the idea of having like a band in studio with me is so oh, just yeah. nightmare fuel. Like I love that I go film and then I say, hold on, I'm going to go. I'll be back in two weeks with <laughs> something to show you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And those two weeks are my own. Yeah. All my mistakes are my own. I don't have to worry about someone. Oh, and, like, I see so what you're many, talking about now. Yeah. yeah I sorry. Yeah. There's, and there's so many parts of editing where it's like, this is bad now, but it makes sense to me, but I have to go through this bad or like, I'm trying an idea and I don't yeah. know if the idea works, but if I was in studio, I wouldn't try an idea that I wasn't confident in. I would try things that yeah. I think are going to sell well. Yeah. And that freedom to me is so huge. And yeah, when I sit in the, in the studio with the audio engineers, it's like, you're taking a risk with the five of these motherfuckers behind you or like yeah. they're paying you a day rate and you're, you have to sit there and it's work. It's scary, like, right? I, yeah. Something about that is just not, it's it doesn't funny. feel conducive to creating to me. Yeah. I, uh, so I can't say the band yet because I don't, think they've said anything about sure it but shout out bring me horizon yo <laughs> shout out fucking uh uh slipknot <laughs> slipknot was at the crib sick cool yep and they were in my office sick but because we were hanging out because i'm friends with slipknot rad shout out masks or no masks 
They wear their masks oh, everywhere. My bad, sorry. I wasn't yeah, no, like too sorry. confident in there. No, that's right. Demeanor. But all the new members, I, I I tell them to wait outside. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So cool, like, cool, what's cool. his name? V Man. You stay out back. <laughs> and then Tortilla Man or whatever the fuck. <laughs> he could stay in like Iowa or whatever. Yeah. I only want to hang out with like Mick Thompson. <laughs> Fire. Okay. They're the original members. Fire. Anyway, <laughs> we all hung out. They're all hanging out. Yeah, yeah. It was dope. <laughs> cool. Uh, but it, it it was funny. Like something that kind of blew my mind and i think it kind of put into perspective like and this isn't like talking shit in any way and i hope it doesn't come off this way but when people don't design or do video or whatever the fuck and i and i had this moment with me too where like they see you like make a letter big versus small and they're like whoa and you're like bro i just made it big and they're like no but that looks fucking sick you know, and it's really, it's, it's mm-hmm. neat because what you don't, sometimes you forget that like what you do has such an impact, Yep. you know, and that was really cool. But yes. to tie it back in, the idea of them sitting in my office while I was working was like, I love you all to death. Mm-hmm. I Nothing is going to happen here. Like, because I can't, I can't flow, Yep. you know? Yeah. But yeah, to... To make it seem like not shit talky because I don't want to seem like I'm talking shit about no, I think, I think it's valid, someone yeah. seeing a T getting big and be like, whoa. But I remember, so when I was in Boundaries, um, we filmed Carve, that video, mm-hmm. in my house. Okay. So yeah, that yeah, yeah. that whole thing is my, my house. Carve was the precursor to Behind the Bend, and I did the video for Behind the Bend. You did do that. You You're did like the animation. The sequencing there, that Carve yeah. is the precursor, and then it ends in a scene that starts Behind the Bend, or is Carve after? It was, it was Carve, Behind the Bend, into Rather Not Say. There we go, yes. And I and did the like, animations portions for Yeah, on the in-between, the yes. and it was on like a secret link and shit. Yeah. That was really fun. Fire. That was Hell cool. Yes. Cool. Um, so Carve was... In my house. Hell yeah. Um, And I also realized it's like touring and stuff too. But like, I remember we filmed that day and I think we had to film two days and we, uh, we would film in my dining room. So anything that was in the dining room all got shoved into the kitchen or the living room. Mm -hmm. And then we had to film in the living room. So then everything (laughs) will get shoved into the kitchen (laughs) out or the dining room, (laughs) you know? And I remember that night we were all playing guitar hero and just like chilling because it was like big day mm-hmm. and Eric Easter day shout out. He was on his computer and he was like, guys, look at this. And he just showed like one shot with like a little bit of color correction on it. And I was just like, <laughs> I just spit it in my bed. Dude, no, no, I was just like, table. <laughs> I clean it. It was just like mind blowing and yeah. it looked so fucking cool yeah. and so real. And like, he rules. Yeah, he's got. I've Dude, got him he's the yeah. he's the man. I got. He's in Philadelphia, right, or Kentucky? I or think shit? he's in Kentucky now. Uh, I got a. Or I got he, like a trip or something. You know, Dude, something I'll else. literally, I'll call him right now, <laughs> and see if he wants to come do this, uh, or I'll point. make him do it. I, then I do loosely over. know him because we work together on that yeah. project. But yeah. It's oh right, right, right. And also, we're yeah. I'm, I refuse to do these over Zoom. Like to me, doing this any other way than in person is not worth my time. And I recognize that that is. Yeah, I'm on a collision course as I yeah have more people on. It's like oh fuck no. The next step is to go go out well, of my where, comfort zone. Here. Where are the? Uh, we'll figure that out. But fuck. Where are the uh, are there. the state of the scene dudes from? Uh, actually, pretty close to here. Really? Yeah, they're. Uh, I'll tell you more off air, but they're in right, the, like, right. the Worcester-ish area. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Pretty close by. All right, that makes sense then. Yeah, because I saw that and I was like, um, I don't know where they're from, but I was like, oh, that's I cool don't know that they That's the other challenge in. is that I reach out. Uh, I asked someone to come on the other day, and he goes, "I'd love to, but I live in Rochester." And it what was the like, "Fuck, okay, I guess." Like, I understand driving six hours here yeah, is a little more, and I'm also not driving six right, hours to you right. to flip it. So I do think it would be dope. Yeah. I know, I know, this is probably not something to talk about like on here, but like it would be we're cool. This, we're this far. It, it, it would be cool to go <laughs> to a place mm-hmm. and like find like a cool looking place to like set yes. up shop. Yes, that'd be so cool. I've done a couple in hotels, done a couple in like studios and stuff. Uh, so definitely that is. I've had, uh, you know, Sam Link. Do you remember the name Sam Link? He was a music video guy from, I feel Dude, like Dude, Sleeping with Sirens music video guy. Yes. yes. Tour video guy. Yes. 
Holy shit. Uh, so Sam Link did a music video tour at some point that it's always stuck out to me as an interesting concept. And basically what he did, um, I'm sure I'm generalizing the details here, but I think it was maybe 15 or 30 music videos, like a, a good chunk I of music videos. I feel like I videos. remember this. And he, yeah, just rented a van the same way a band would. And every other day or whatever was in a new state filming a new video and brought two or three of his buddies out with him. And yeah, basically did a tour the same way a local band Holy would. And shit. made a music video thing. And that has always been such a cool model to me of like, uh, I would need a big network throughout the country. Like right now I don't have bands in Kentucky and Pennsylvania, much sure. less that I could do on demand and put them in a row and, you know, do it on my time. Right. Of course. Like yeah. there's a, a long way between me and the network I would need to make something like that realistic, but yeah. some smaller version of that is more possible. So like, yeah, when I'm traveling for other videos, I've squeezed in some, yeah, um, really but yeah, neat. maybe in the summer there's some uh, loose part of my brain that's like, yeah, what if I do a, a week, you know, yeah, make it small dude. and to go to Pennsylvania down to the Carolina or some shit. Mm. I don't know. I don't know who's along the route or where I would well, go, but I feel like a lot of people do that where like, it's not like a, a concept of like a video tour, but yeah. it's like, if I'm going to be in this area and this homie that I know in this area, that's yep. pretty close needs something too. They kind of like line up the days so they can kind of yep. chunk out a time to fly to connecticut to go to mm -hmm. new york afterwards or something like yep. that you know which yeah. is really cool that's the that's the goal so yeah as that's we awesome. talk about getting people in from different states it's like yeah. yeah i think there's a way to do it and this is all portable and obviously mm -hmm. i'm i'm used to setting up video sets wherever yeah, i yeah, end yeah. up so yeah it's all that's so it's sick. All doable but it, yeah it feels like a long a long way off that'd be but awesome it exists i'm in making my brain, i'm making this happen now sick i'm telling you that we got to do this thank you whenever i someday make that fucking office a thing hell yes you got to come visit hell yes and then happily. we'll do we'll do another one happily but we'll I would do like it to come see it yeah and then when the tech decks are made we'll have a fingerboarding session sick because they're, they're the fingerboards. They're not tech decks. They're fingerboards. Sorry, they're tech decks. <laughs> All right, I got to go, guys. I think I'm pretty forgiving and amiable <laughs> in a lot of ways. That's one place I'm drawing a hard line. Listen, same. tiny little plastic things for like 10 bucks, tech deck. Big, thick. <laughs> okay, pause. <laughs> <laughs> Big wood ply. Like a, yeah, you tell them, Zane. <laughs> take a fucking skateboard. Shoot it with a gun that that makes things shrink small. Gun, yeah. Shrink gun ray. Yeah. Zoom. That's a fingerboard. They got bearings in yeah, the wheels. Yeah, I don't you have know. the money to print those. I need to print the the two dollar plastic ones. No, I I know a guy, and I'm serious. I know someone who we were gonna do fingerboards for Centralia when that was a band. Okay. So. Maybe I have a connect for you. Maybe. That. Yeah. Um, we'll see. I'm in the hole. And <laughs> we'll what? see. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Something to look forward to. Yo, there's shirts available now. Shirts available now. Buy it. Yeah. Cool stuff. And then you'll get a cool fingerboard. Hopefully. Maybe um, one day. That feels like a good place to tie us up here. It feels like we're already moving that direction. Sorry. Episode 63 of From Everyone. I'm here with Zadak Brooks. Zadak, before we get out of here. Uh, so, yes, shirts are available everywhere. Please pick one up. Uh, please do leave a comment. Like to the show. Yeah, make me feel good. Make numbers go burn. Yes. Um, where do people tell you that you're awesome? Where do they tell you that you design awesome designs for us? Where do they hire you to get their own cool designs made? Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, uh, boy. Pressure's on. Inquiries at zadakbrooks.com. Use is... that fucking email. Just, Swear, if you don't fucking do it. Email, I'm, I'm bringing this over here so I can look at you, motherfucker. Nice, yeah. I'm gonna please. Sign up, I'm going to sign you up for like christianmingle.com with that email. Oh, dude, please don't. That's going to rule, dude. That would suck dick. Shout out, dude. Because then I would just get spanned. <laughs> hey, if you're listening, don't do that. I don't, hope nobody does. Don't do that. <laughs> please. You fuck. I'm so sorry if someone does. But if someone's so gonna fucked, now, dude. that's such a fucked up thing. I'll be pissed. I don't have enough viewers, so I feel like if someone does, we could pretty easily figure out who Exactly it who it is. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> Inquiries but if you're going to do it, Brooks, let me know because it'll be pretty cool. That'd be funny, I guess. <laughs> Zabrooks.com is a website that will hopefully be out by the time that this is a thing. Uh, I'm going to try. It's Yeah, this is really fucking funny. Christian Mingle, I'm so stoked for that. I'm so mad at you right now. Thank Inquiries you. at Zabrooks.com is my email. <laughs> uh, if you want to just... Fucking yap about bullshit or Christian Mingle. Zadak at zadakbrooks.com is also a thing, but they just lead to the same place. Zadak Brooks is the website that will eventually be done. Zadak Brooks X is my Instagram. Just don't follow me on Twitter. I don't fucking use it. I Lit. sometimes do. Lit. Uh, yeah. I, I, I said how that Knock Loose song was cool today because it is. Pretty pretty neat music happening. Yeah. Um, music hell yeah. Time. We fucking did it. Buy a shirt. Tell Zadek he's cool. Hire him for more cool shirt. stuff. Oh, I'm gonna plug something. Please see this hat. I see I'm, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I have do visuals. I'm gonna do pre-orders for this. 
I want I want to I want to print these. So if you want one, I'm gonna do that, and it's gonna be on the shop section of the website when the website's out. It's gonna look good as hell. That's right. Get it done. Yeah. Shout out Cherry Ways Market for hooking this up. Yes. Shout out to her in advance for hopefully printing my stuff. <laughs> she will, and it'll look good. <laughs> That's it'll the game plan. But I don't like counting my eggs before they hatch. Awesome. Sounds I'm, great. I'm getting a shirt, so there will be one. Sick, nasty. Bye, friends. Have a beautiful day. Bye.